Okay, Dr. Mindy here, and I've come to continue my conversation with you all about metabolically flexible. What does that mean, and how can you make sure that you're always in a state of metabolic flexibility? So, and there's a lot of pieces to it, so this is why we're dedicating this whole week to this idea, because once you grasp it and you understand it for you, uh, it's, there's so much freedom in it. You'll stop worrying about macros. You'll find that you can enjoy the different styles of fasting. You can feast okay. It's just a beautiful place to live. So um, this morning I put out a video. I showed you guys seven different things that your mitochondria need in order to stay healthy. And it's the mitochondria of the cell that is determining metabolism. So this is the part of the cell that you're going to want to fix. Now there's another part to that story and that's what I'm bringing you guys today. And that's that the mitochondria, and I drew this out and I apologize, my, my drawing is not that of my staff. Uh, when I draw the, when you get all those beautiful uh, pictures, they are not coming from me. Um, but the other part of that story that I want you to look at is that the mitochondria are inside the cell, okay? So, um, so you want, the, when you look at the mitochondria, you've got to understand that there is a cellular membrane around the outside of this cell that has to be healed first. You've got to repair that in order to even get into the mitochondria to make yourself metabolically flexible. So for example, one of the things that we know really heals a cell and heals these mitochondria are ketones, which is awesome. This is what we're all trying to get with fasting and with the ketogenic diet. But if this outer membrane is not as rigid and swollen, you're not, not even, those ketones are not even gonna be able to get in there to heal those mitochondria. Um, same thing with the things like oxygen and the nutrient to heal the mitochondria. Those will be very difficult if you don't work on the outer part of the, of the cell membrane. So we have to repair the membrane, and how do we do that? And there really are four things, and I'm going to do them actually in the order I would encourage you to repair them in. And the first thing that you've got to do to repair the cellular membrane is you have to eat the right fat, just made up of fat. So if you are eating bad fats, you are causing the whole outside of this membrane to be congested and swollen, and you're literally building yourself a rigid cell membrane that is not going to let the nutrients in and not going to let the toxins out. So this is like I'm going to say it's about a 90-10 rule. Sometimes I tell you guys about the 80-20 rule. 80-20 rule is 80% of the time you want to make sure that you're eating very clean. 20% of the time you can get away with a little more toxic food. But when it comes to, this, to fats and the cellular membrane, you honestly, 90% of your diet, 90% uh, of the time, um, that you're eating, need, you need to be conscious that you're always having good fats. And then 10%, if you have some french fries here and there, it's not going to be the end of the world. But that's 10%. That's a very small amount of time. So let me make this really applicable for you. And what I see with a lot of people is they get really into fasting, they get really into keto, but then when they do eat, they're eating the wrong fats. And then they're frustrated because they're not getting the results that they want, that everybody else is getting with keto. So the first question to ask yourself is, are you eating the right fats 90% of the time? So are you, and that would mean going out to dinner. Think about it. Even at high-end restaurants, they can be cooking with canola oil and vegetable oil, and those fats are causing those, that outer membrane to swell. Okay, second thing that you need to be conscious of in order to heal this membrane is, is sugar. We, this is why we do the keto diet, right? So insulin, you have these receptor sites on the outside of the cell membrane. And if you're eating at this receptor site here, and this is what insulin resistance is, is the insulin can't get into the cell anymore. So if you're a resetter in my Facebook group, I did a little post on this this morning. I showed you guys that picture. 
So make sure you're doing the good fat on the outside so you build yourself a really healthy membrane and then make sure that you're not that you're bringing your insulin levels down by eating less sugar as many of you are already doing here on my channel. Okay? Third thing, you have other receptor sites over here for hormones. And these hormones, these receptor sites can get blocked by toxins and they can get blocked by BPA plastic, which is ubiquitous in our environment. It's in a lot of our foods, but this, this is even now getting down to the nitty gritty of like, are you eating food in plastic? Are you microwaving plastic containers? Are you, are you putting saran wrap around things? Are you drinking out of water out of plastic bottles? Well, BPA is gonna go into these receptor sites and block it so that hormones can't get in, but it's also gonna make it, once you have a toxin there, it's gonna start to swell this part of the cell and make it difficult for even ketones to start to get in there and heal those mitochondria. Uh, heavy metals, this is why we're so fanatical in my clinic about helping people pull heavy metals out. Lead and mercury that we're finding in our soils, mercury that we have from dental care and in our fish, cesium and thallium that we're, is in secondhand smoke. Those kind of things will come, those kind of metals will come in here and block these receptor sites. So now if you've had exposure to that, you come along to fasting and keto, and if you aren't eating the right fats, if you're not detoxifying and you're not bringing your consistently bringing those insulin levels down, you're not going to get the keto results that you want to be to get, and you're definitely not going to be metabolically flexible, uh, which is really the state where you can click in and out of this uh, keto high is what I would call it, like where you can go all day without food, uh, where you have a ton of energy, you're not going to be metabolically flexible because you haven't handled the, the toxic load and you haven't held, handled the fat, the issue around fat, okay? So most of you are doing really great with the insulin. Now, the fourth thing, and this is something that actually Bruce Lipton really brought to our attention, and that is that if if you're always in a state of negative thinking, so negative stressed out thoughts, actually he's done measurements where he found that the many of the edges of your cell membranes start to respond in an inflammatory way to a lot of negativity, to a lot of stress. So you can actually inflame the outer cell just by your negative thoughts alone. So this is why you need tools and you need environments where you are working towards thinking more positively, living in more of a state of joy. Go back and watch all the brain reset videos I did on this. Um, but negative thoughts can affect this outer membrane as well, okay? Now, one last thing, and then I, I'll open this up for questions. Remember that the mitochondria also have a membrane. So again, I go back to fats are crucial. They are more important than sugar. You have to be eating the right good fats. Then you've got to be minimizing your sugar, which again, most of you are doing so well. And then you have to make sure that you're minimizing your toxic load. Um, I find it very uh, interesting that a a lot of these new keto snacks, and uh, I heard recently that something like that Slim Fast has come out uh, with a keto product that's full of toxins and that has the wrong fats in it. When you're dealing with products like that, you're only going to find your results to be very frustrating because you're going to block receptor sites with toxins and you're going to inflame the outer cell with the wrong fats. So fats, sugar... Got disconnected somehow. And maybe she unplugged our router. No, okay, we're back live. We're back. Sorry okay, about we're that. We're having internet difficulties. So, uh -huh. but make sure that you're, we call it clean living. Make sure that you're cleaning up, your, that your uh, uh, daily habits are good. This is not a game of fast and then pour junk into the body. This is a game of fast and then feed the body some really good quality fats, feed it good quality foods, feed your microbiome. If you continue to do that, you will become metabolically flexible. I promise. So, okay, let me address some questions that my resetters had um, and a couple of our academy members had uh, today and then I'll open it up for questions from you guys. 
Okay, so Marianne Cash, she is a, one of our Academy members, and, and um, she had a couple questions that I think are pertinent to all of us. So she wanted to know why she gets cold and shivery when she fasts. Um, it sounds like, Marianne, I know you're not on this call, but it um, sounds like uh, she hasn't experienced this before, not dropping weight as quickly with her fast, has her questioning, is she been fasting too much? And I want to bring up that topic of can you fast too much? Um, because you can. Remember that fasting is taking your body into this restorative state. It's taking in, it into a self-repair state. And uh, what we want to make sure is that you're in growth phase. This is why go back and watch the protein cycling videos that I did. We want to make sure that you're building up and growing the, your cells sometimes. And then we want you to be in repairing sometimes. But if you're always in repair and you're always in autophagy and you're always in detoxing, which a lot of fasting will do, eventually that you get into a place of, of depletion. And depletion can be your hair falling, falling out. It can be, yes, it can be you're cold all the time when you're fasting. Uh, it could be in and to mix up your fasting. So, uh, Marianne, let me know if that, that, if that helps. Um, okay, it looks, we're, again, we're having problems. Uh, keep going. Okay. I'm not sure if it's... It sounds like we have some internet challenges today, so I'm just going to keep talking until we get through this. But, um, okay, so Julie wanted to know what causes her stomach to rumble um, after 38 hours of fasting. Um, well, it's interesting because remember at 24 hours, you get intestinal stem cells that kick in. So your body's repairing something in there, and it may be t turning off bad bacteria, um, and it may be actually bringing in new, new bacteria. So I love fasting for curing gut problems. Please lean into that, keep doing that. Rumbling is not a bad sign. Okay, then there was a couple other really cool points. Oh, Amanda wanted to know, she said that she's getting, um, that she's getting a lot of inflammation in her thighs and her belly areas after eating. So I haven't dove into this a lot on YouTube. We talk a ton about this in my, with my academy members. Um, but remember when you are fasting, you're detoxing. Bottom line, it's a detox. And those toxins have to go somewhere. And they're going to go out through your lymph. They're going to go out through your digestive system. They're going to come out through your skin. When those pathways are open, you should have good bowel movements, um, you should, you, you should, some people notice they sweat more when they're detoxing, um, and you should, you should not have like lymph nodes that are swollen. Those kind of things are just, you should, should be normal when you're detoxing. You shouldn't feel swollen parts. You shouldn't have rashes. If you do have those, that's a sign you've got closed pathways. And there are a lot of different ways to open up your pathways. Um, I've, I've talked a, a lot about that. Um, movement is one, make sure that you're always moving. Dry brushing is a good idea. Coffee enemas are a great idea. Infrared saunas are a good idea. There's a, lot, there's a long list of opening up the pathways. And I, I think I keep promising that I'm gonna do a video for you guys here on YouTube on that, and I will because uh, when we go and take people through our heavier detoxes, um, this is crucial. We do not move somebody onto a deeper detox until those pathways are open. And I would tell you the same thing. If you're fasting and then eating and you're noticing these swollen body parts, you're getting rashes, you, should not, you shouldn't lean into longer and longer fast because your pathways may not be open and you wanna have strategies to open them. Um, if you're in the academy, we're gonna go over that in more detail on our call this Thursday. So this is the kind of stuff we work out for people inside the academy. But I wanted you to know uh, Amanda, that if you're getting inflammation in the belly and the thighs, it's, it's a pathway that's shut. So there are things you can do. And then the last person I wanted to po point out before I open it up was Elizabeth Peterson. Um, said she's been doing seven months of fast training week and she's, she's been able to get her, her fasting, her blood sugar, and that has taken her seven months of uh, doing fast training week. So, and then now she said that her um, A1C has gone down to 6.37 from 10, 9 in April. So we're here in November. She started fast 
training weeks in April, around April, she had an A1C, and for you guys that don't know what A1C is, it's your three months of insulin. It's a, it's a long-term look at your in the sixes. That is a positive sign the body's healing. The reason I really wanted to point Elizabeth out too is that you have to remember that this stuff takes time. So for many of you, you're doing the right thing. You just need to do it over and over and over again, which I know is the boring answer. It's not the fun answer, but it is an answer that will work really well for you. So this is why we come up with resets and we, this is why I do something new every month so that I try to mix up the boredom so that uh, you guys are always having something fun to engage in. So, okay, those were my questions from my resetters. I don't know if we have anybody. We have a um, few good questions, okay, yeah. Right. Um, awesome. So the first one is from Carmen Babb and uh, Debbie and uh, Cardinal are both answering as well. Okay. Answering. Um, but uh, she wants to. She's uh, been. She's lost twelve pounds awesome. uh, in doing keto for three months. She doesn't Congrats. say what amount she's trying to lose, but um, but she still has fat in her belly area, yeah. a specific area. Okay, so I, I I had a call with a patient yesterday, and I think this is such an important point to, that I want you all to get. Your it when your toxic load goes up in your body, your body is so smart that it has to figure out, as that toxic load goes up, where is it gonna store these toxins? So remember that our bodies are programmed for survival. So is it in the body's best interest to store those toxins in the liver or, the, or store them in the heart or the lung, or is it in the body's best interest to put it into a place like fat? Well, I think you all would guess that it's better for the body to store toxins in fat. So now, as we go into keto and fasting, and we're unwinding and healing the body, that stubborn belly fat, particularly, often is those stored toxins. So there was two things that I would tell you. One, keep fasting. The longer fast will make sure that it shakes some of that stuff loose. So 36 hours fast, like one time a week is really good. And then start, start a detox. Start, and I... Go watch my video I did on detoxing because I give you different phases of detoxing that you can click into. But that's usually when, we, when we're getting that stubbornness, um, that, those, those are some good tricks. Longer fast, detox. Now, if you've been longer fasting and you're still stuck and you're not losing it, then you got to add in the variation. Okay, um, and Kim, uh, Eddie wants to know maybe some good example, uh, examples of good fats. Okay, good fats, awesome. It's funny, thank you Eddie for asking this because I was gonna put a post out about it and I thought, I wonder if everybody knows good fats versus bad fats. So it's, it's really important to uh, reiterate. So the, the worst fats are canola, vegetable oil, soybean oil, partially hydrogenated oils, um, things like margarine are no good. Um, and believe it or not, olive oil, if you heat it up, so if it gets heated up, those are the, the typical worst fats that we see in, in foods. And if you walk into your supermarket and you look at the chip and you look at the um, cracker and the cookie aisle, you're going to find all of those foods in there. Um, the good oils, uh, that the ones specifically that we really like, are avocado oil, coconut oil, oil sesame oil, um, and olive oil if you don't heat it up. So if you keep it, like I do um, a really nice organic, fresh olive oil, I'll put it in my salad dressing. Then grass-fed dairy is also a really good fat. Um, raw nuts are good. Um, uh, nuts that have been oiled and then cooked aren't really good. Dry nuts, not as bad, but raw nuts are your best because they also have enzymes in them. So, but that's how pasteurized dairy, full fat pasteurized dairy, not great. Raw dairy, yeah, that hasn't been heated up is, is considered a good fat. So, great question. Great. Uh, um, and Kim has a really interesting question. Okay. How do you know when the membrane is healed on the cell? Is there any physical manifestations? Yeah. Is it only lab tests that could tell us that? Well, we actually do a test in our office called a Medioxy test. 
it's 15 times more um, sensitive than like CRP. Is CRP is your typical blood test one, uh, measurement of inflammation. Medioxy, it's a little urine test and, and we have people uh, pee in a little cup and then they put a little agitator in this test tube, we mix it up. Based off the color, we can tell cellular inflammation. So um, there is a test like that. Um, but otherwise, you can also go off of symptoms. So uh, there's a couple, you know, st stiff and achy joints, tr uh, um, trouble losing weight. Uh, so those of you that are like applying everything and you still feel like you've got cellular inflammation or you're still not getting the results, then there's a possibility you have that cellular inflammation. Um, so those kind of brain fog can cause, uh, can be a sign of cellular inflammation, loss of memory. Hormone imbalances usually have a cellular inflammation piece to it. But if you're like just really healthy, you have an insane energy, you're following these protocols, and you're like, I'm, I'm symptom free, I'm living a great life, then the Medioxy or you can get a CRP blood test would let you know. Great. And Carmelo has a, an interesting question about blood sugar okay. and uh, getting frustrated. So um, he's been OMAD for, or she, I'm not sure, uh, Carmelo. Uh, I, don't, I, I have no idea why I have connection issues today, but I do on my internet. So um, Carmelo was asking, so high blood sugar, and it doesn't seem to be coming down despite doing one meal a day. Um, and keeping sugar really low. So there's really two answers for it. I don't know how long you've been doing one meal a day, but if you've been doing one meal a day for too long, you need to vary it. Only two months. Oh, two so, months. Yeah. Okay, then you're in the new phases. Don't worry about variation yet. My Leads me to my second um, possibility, which is stored sugar. So it's very possible that, your sugar, that you've just got a lot of stored sugar. So let me kind of walk through the, the way that your body will unwind the sugar. Um, and it's really based off of how your body will, where it will store it. So when insulin goes up, what ends up happening is it'll get high and sugar will get, blood sugar and insulin will be really high in the blood uh, first. Then when the, when the cells are saturated, it will store it in the liver and then it'll store it in the fat. So when you unwind all that stored glucose, you're gonna to have to go back through that again. You're gonna to have to go from fat to liver to cell. Well, when you're looking at a blood reader, you're only measuring what's in the cell. We have no idea what's stored in the fat. We have no idea what's stored in the liver. So it's most likely stored sugar. If you keep at this, I promise you that number will undo itself. It's kind of like uh, Elizabeth's you know, uh, story, where she, her A1C was at 10, now it's at six. How many months did it take her? Seven months, so you're two months in. So it will just keep at it and it will come down. Great, um, we have about five more minutes. So okay. uh, uh, this person uh, is a 46 year old woman and just finished five day water fast. Oh, awesome. Uh, to reset the metabolism and stop sugar cravings, but okay. they're still craving sugar. Okay. So. Okay. So five day water fast. Congrats. First, you just really should pat yourself on the back because nobody can do that but you. That's what I love about fasting. You, nobody can tell you to do it, and nobody can take credit for it but you. You're you're in charge of this thing. So congratulations. Um, but. Uh, Cravings, so we're, this is where we dive into the gut bacteria. So your microbiome will determine what, you, what your cravings will be, what your taste buds want, what your brain thinks it wants. So usually that's a candida issue. There's a fungus that lives in the gut and it thrives off carbs, fruit, sugar, alcohol. And so when it's dying off with fasting, which is very common, this is why I love using fasting for as a tool for um, gut problems, but when you go into something like a five-day water fast, what you're doing is the, that candida has been dying, and it's like, I need food, I need food. So it's going to increase your cravings. So um, this is where I would throw in 
and candida killers. We have a 60 day protocol that we use. You can go to our website and you can see the 60 day protocol there. Um, there are tinctures and some supplements that you can use to kill the candida so that craving doesn't keep coming back. Um, the, uh, you can also test your gut and find out. This is why we use Gut Zoomer and we'll test people to see if we need to rule in or rule out um, your uh, candida situation. Something's not dying off in there and usually it's candida. Okay, um, last thoughts before we have to wrap up. I you know we have a few more questions, but it looks like uh, Debbie and Clark, uh, um, last thoughts before we wrap up. Um, yeah, no, I, this is it's interesting because uh, each time I come to you guys on Fast Training Week, um, I want you to teach. I want to teach you a concept, and uh, one of the things that I think is so missing in our uh, healthcare system is that nobody's teaching us how. We didn't get a user manual for this. Nobody's teaching us how to use this. So um, metabolically flexible is a really tough concept to teach, but it's a really crucial one. So follow me through this whole progression this week. Each one, unlike any other fast training week, each one of these is going to build, each concept will build on top of each other. Um, and so that by Friday, you're gonna have a, a real complete picture. So under, understand that. And uh, if you're not in my Facebook group, my Resetters Facebook group, um, just put Resetters in the comments and we'll invite you in. I did a really good video last night on Metabolically Flexible that sort of set the tone for this week on what it is and how do you know and how do you measure if you're, in metabol you're metabolically flexible. So go in and watch that. Um, today I talked to you about that outer membrane and how important that is. Uh, tomorrow we're going to dive into the inside of that cell and we're going to talk about how do we change the environment inside that cell so the, those mitochondria can really thrive in there. Um, so it's, think of this as chapters to a book um, so that you can kind of by the end of the book or end of the week really feel like you are been metabolically flexible. So, okay, this has been the mic the mic wasn't so. plugged in and our our <laughs> internet was crazy okay. sorry about that everyone. okay as always hope that helps